Polly, what are you cooking today? Well, I'd just like to say hi everyone. This is Polly P and I'm from Clever Cook Spot and also the Facebook page Clever Chef Recipes. Today we're going to cook a Mediterranean style shepherd's pie but we're going to be using three appliances. Number one, we're going to be using the Redmond but also the same as the CC. Then we're going to be using the PKP and then we're going to be finishing with the air fryer. So what are you doing now Polly? Okay, we're putting the Redmond on to fry for 15 minutes and with the CC it would be saute program and we're going to start to um, fry the vegetables. So Polly, what ingredients are you using today? Okay, we're going to start with two medium sized red onions that are quite finely diced and I can hear that the um, cooker is just getting warm enough for me to put those in and we're going to give those just three or four minutes to slightly start to soften before we add two sticks of celery and one large carrot diced and that will be followed a few minutes later by two Romano peppers, orange and yellow, diced and approximately 200 grams of chestnut mushrooms followed by the garlic and four sprigs of finely chopped rosemary and the same of finely chopped fresh oregano. If you choose to use dried with the rosemary, no more than one teaspoon, because otherwise it can be a bit soapy if you go get too much. And also two teaspoons of dried oregano. I've also pre-browned the mince ahead of time, because it actually saves time. How long did that mince take to cook? And that took five minutes <clears throat> on either fry or sauté. Cool. Back again, so we've given the onions about two to three minutes just to start them softening and lightly browning. We're now going to add the celery and the carrots in one go. And I'd like to saute them for probably about five minutes, just stirring occasionally. So, for those of you who don't know me, I'm not really being myself tonight. I'm putting it all on, it's all an act. So I'm now going to start being myself and I might even have a glug of red wine. <laughs> Some of which I hasten to add, I'm having to give up to put in this food. And I'm not happy about it. Just to let you know, after you've given the carrots and the celery two or three minutes, it's a really good idea to close the lid because they'll cook off a lot more quickly. Keep the moisture in and then you won't get any stick at the bottom of the pot. So I'm going to close the lid now. Now we're going to add the mushrooms, and as most of you will probably know, they're going to give off a fair bit of liquid. So we just need to stir those in, leave the lid open so that we can get that liquid to bubble off. And just let them go their own way for a few minutes. I'm not sure how much quicker it is to do it with these appliances than it is in a conventional oven. But what I will say is, clearly it's less space, it's far more economical and I think you will save maybe about 20 minutes in total so I think that's really worth thinking about mm. now it's time to add the peppers and along with that we can now add the garlic because if we had that first it would have been burnt by now and that is not nice and incidentally I know you don't see my face smiling, but my eyes are, trust me, and I promise you I've not had a facelift. See, <laughs> I can. <coughs> we're going to give this about one minute, and then we're going to start adding the rest of the ingredients. Now I'd like to add back the pre-browned mints. There is a lot here and I'm always making way more than I actually need for two of us, but I do like to bulk cook. 
and freeze and that's mainly because I just can't cook for two people. I have to cook for six or eight. So now to the mince as it's stirred I'm going to add two tablespoons fairly level or slightly rounded of plain flour because this is going to act as the thickener. So we need to really stir this in well and get it cooked out before we add any liquids. Because the worst thing with any shepherd's pie is to have too much liquid in the gravy. It needs to be thick and rich. And that's the way we like it in this house. <laughs> and while that's cooking out, I'm just going to add some black pepper, fresh ground. Optional. I won't be adding any salt until right at the end because we've got stock to go in there which has got some salt in and we've also got some tomato, sun-dried tomato pesto going in which has got parmesan in so that's going to be salty so we'll check it right at the end. Okay so now as you can see, I've tried the wine before it goes in because my lipstick's on there. <laughs> now my glass of wine is going in and I'm so sorry to see it go. Mm -hmm. That's just going to bubble off for a couple of minutes before I add a tin of whole plump tomatoes followed by the stock. So let's stir that a little bit. And at this point, the pot's really quite hot, so it's really bubbling off quickly. And especially as I've added the flour, it's all absorbing it, so it's wonderful flavour. So now, I like to add whole plum tomatoes, and I like to just squeeze them in, one by one, and break them up, followed by the juices. I just feel that there's better flavour. Call me daft, but the choice is yours. You can use pre-chopped. But this is just my personal preference and incidentally all of the vegetables that I've put in there please feel free just to do exactly what you want because as always I'm needing to use vegetables up that are in the fridge I don't want them wasted so now in goes the stock and we're going to give that a really good stir around how much stock was it? And that was 500 mils of beef stock. Again, that's another, that really is an important reason not to season until the end. Because you may find you don't actually need it. Again, it's all down to personal preference. Now, bear with me while I just rinse my hand off. What function is that on at the moment? This is on fry, sauté. It's still on sauté? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now we're at the final stage, folks. On the Redmond, we have a multi-cook function and the default setting is 120 degrees C, 15 minutes. On the CC, it would be on DIY, and I believe it is still 120. It may be 15 minutes, it may not. I'm going to adjust the timing up. To 20 minutes and start and then close the lid. So it's 120 on 20 minutes. Which is what I just said clearly to the camera. Something I did need to mention, during the cook time on the DIY or multi-cook function, please stir a couple of times or maybe even three times during that cook period. Because there's flour added in there, it will stick, and the last thing you want is it for it to burn on the bottom. So it's only a slight stick, but you just need to make sure that that keeps moving. And then for the last two to three minutes, just lift the lid and let that bubble off to thicken out the sauce a little bit more. Okay, so now we're down to six minutes time on the CC or the Redmond, whichever you have. We're now going to cook the potatoes which have been quite finely diced and they will stay in that diced state. They won't be mashed. 
and that's the difference in this type of uh, shepherd's pie. And on the top of that, they're going to be coated with Parmesan cheese and seasoning. So I've just boiled a kettle and I am just going to just cover the potatoes so it goes just beyond the minimum level. This is a 5 litre uh, PKP and then we are going to set it to the steam program and we're going to give it 3 minutes and release it, the pressure rapidly. So it's bubbling off nicely now, isn't it? Mm. Have you tasted it? I have tasted it. Is it any good? It tastes divine. Does it need salt? Not yet. We need to still add the pesto, and the pesto is going to be quite salty. So it might not need any extra seasoning at all. Um, Polly, the PKP is coming up to pressure, isn't it? Um, and you put boiling water in. I always add boiling water before I'm going to cook anything in there that needs water and I would do the same with the CC or the Redmond because it speeds up the process. And how long does it normally take to come to pressure, the PKP? Oh, it can vary. It um, depends on what you're actually cooking in there. It uh, can take about five or six minutes, maybe a little bit longer. Okay, so the time's up on the Redmond, and we all know, or the CC, whichever you, you have, that the food will keep on bubbling and remain hot for a very long time, and also it automatically goes over to keep warm. Well, if you're making a shepherd's pie or even a meat pie, you don't want that liquid boiling. So I'm going to remove the pot now and just leave it on the draining board just to come down in temperature a little bit. Incidentally, you know what? Let's have a look at all of these gadgets because it looks pretty damn tidy over here, I think. You should see the rest of the kitchen. It's carnage. Cool, what a state. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to re release the pressure on the potatoes because they've finished their cook time. And note, I've got a hand covered in an oven glove and my wrist is covered because boy is this hot. And you really do need to realise just how hot that is and how easy it is to get yourself scalded. Okay, so now We've left the um, meat mix to stand and just come down to less than boiling hot actually. It wouldn't be ambient, not at this point. It's still going to hold its heat really well. The potatoes were cooked after three minutes literally and have been drained and left to air dry. And I'm just trying to stick a spoon in my jar to get two tablespoons of pesto and the spoon's too big. So I'm switching to a small one, which means that two, we've got big teaspoons by the way, not normal. So two big de teaspoons of our size would be equal to a tablespoon. If they're normal size teaspoons, then you would need three teaspoons, but six in total. And where did you get the pesto? This pesto is one that came from Lidl. I buy where I can in Lidl because it's good quality and good price. I would normally use, I have to say, a red pepper pesto. That's my personal preference. Couldn't get it, so tonight we will try this. And I'm going to stir it in and amalgamate it and then I'm going to check the seasoning. We may need to add some salt, again we may not. Okay, so I've tasted it 
and I'm going to add a couple of pinches of sea salt flakes. And as we all know, taste is subjective. So you taste, you decide whether you need to add extra seasoning or not. Personally, I want a couple of more pinches crushed in my fingers as I add it of flaked sea salt. Then I'm going to stir that and just allow it to dissolve a little bit before I try it again. Okay, for me the seasoning is absolutely perfect on that and now we're actually going to bring the whole thing together for the final phase. And I'm really excited about this because it means I get to eat because do you know what? I'm ravenous. So if you remember earlier, I did say that I was doing a large batch of this particular mixture. It doesn't have to all be used for a shepherd's pie. Do you know, it would be great with pasta. It would also actually be great with a pie crust on it as a pie. But at least you've got that extra there to freeze and decide what you want to do with it. So in here, I maybe have just over a quarter of the initial mixture. This would actually feed three with a side dish easily. And now on the top of that, I'm going to layer the diced potatoes and then we're going to grate over parmesan and then just a little drizzle of olive oil. Before it goes into the air fryer, I just need to add, it's really important that you cover the whole dish with foil just for the first three to five minutes to let the parmesan cheese start to melt or cheddar if you choose but if you don't trust me I know from experience there's going to be a snowstorm if it was a normal oven though if you put that in a normal oven you don't need to cover it with foil do you? no, no not even on fan assisted no. but to finish it if you're not going to use a conventional oven it's a really that's a really good point you raised Ray you can either do it on your grill, a normal grill. It's just literally to brown it and just reheat maybe a little bit. Or if you've got a combi microwave with a grill, do the same. It's just about getting it brown and getting that crust on it, on the edges of the potatoes, so there's a little bit of crunch. Absolutely delicious. Yum. Incidentally, I've used parmesan in preference to cheddar because it's lower in saturated fat. Also, if you use a really fine grater, then you don't need to use so much. So I may have used 25 to 30 grams in total here. And I am, an, I am a cheese nut, trust me. Anything cheesy, I want it. Now it's time to actually cover the dish with foil. And we're going to be putting it in the oven, in the air fryer, at 190. We're going to give it five minutes with the foil on, just to let that cheese melt down, as I said earlier. Then we're going to remove it so we can get, we'll maybe do it for 15 minutes and then get a nice brown crust on it. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm going to set the air fryer. This is a self-adjust. I'm not using any pre-programmed um, sequence on it. So I'm going to set the temperature to 190 and I'm going to leave it at 15 minutes default. But I am, and it started on its own, it always does it, I am going to take that out after five minutes. Okay, so we've had five minutes and I'm now going to take this out of the oven just to check that the cheese is melted enough not to fly everywhere. I believe we're going to be safe and it's now going to go back in with a drizzle of olive oil a really nice flavoured olive oil. I'm using Greek and it literally wants a drizzle. It's going to help everything crust up and taste even more divine. Darlings. <laughs> Well, Ray's just asked me what's going to happen now, and I just said, well, I'm going to talk. You know, it's just come out of the oven, and look at that, guys. It looks delicious, and I can't wait to get in there. And actually, I expect you can't wait to get in there either. Would you like to have a look? Let's have a look. And here's a small plate just to give you a little taster. The smell is absolutely divine and also I don't believe that I told you the amount of potatoes that I used it was literally just probably one potato under a kilo and I used uh, Jersey Royals just literally because they were there in the fridge if you were going to use old potatoes and you were going to do this as a winter dish then just mash them or, again, cube them. I generally cube them because I'm lazy and I can't be bothered to mash. Enjoy, guys. I hope you like the video. Cool, that smells divine. Yum. <laughs>